Regina O'Hare, and later in this presentation, you will also hear from my co-writer for this report, Daniela Ritz. Save the Children has undertaken a global research study on the impact of COVID-19 on children's health, learning, rights, and protection. This presentation will focus on the specific child protection and wellbeing thematic report and some of the high level findings and recommendations. This research was implemented in 46 countries with nearly 32,000 adult respondents and over 13,000 child respondents aged 11 to 17. The research sampled three distinct population groups and the findings presented focus on the Save the Children program participants group with remote contact details. There were some limitations in the methodology which are detailed in the report, including how some of the child protection areas were measured. Where both the caregiver and a child had completed the survey, nearly one third of households had either a child and or a caregiver who reported that there had been violence occurring in the home, which included children and or adults being verbally or physically abused. There were a number of variables which led to violence being reported at a statistically significant higher rate by children and or adults, including the caregiver having a disability, the respondents living in urban locations, and the family having moved from where they normally live due to COVID-19. The more income a household had lost due to COVID-19, the higher the reporting of violence. Reporting of violence was also higher when schools were closed and the child was not attending. The longer the household had been in home confinement and the higher the number of children living in the household. When a caregiver reported reduced mental health and psychosocial wellbeing, there was also higher reporting of violence. This was also the case for reported lack of access to parenting supports. Over three quarters of caregivers reported an increase in their use of positive parenting methods with children, while conversely, over one in five reported an increase in their use of negative parenting methods. 17% reported increases in both. Interestingly, we saw a co-occurrence of both positive and negative changes in parenting methods and an overlap of risk and protective factors. Several variables, including when more than half of income had been lost due to COVID-19, caregiver reported reduced mental health and psychosocial wellbeing, reported lack of access to parenting supports, and the number of activities caregivers reported doing with children were all significantly associated with both increased use of positive and negative parenting methods. Recommendations in the report have included uplift and investment in positive parenting programming, accessibility of positive parenting programming and messages in general, but specifically for caregivers with a disability in urban areas and on the move, multi-sectoral programming that address interconnected issues such as MHPSS and livelihoods, reviewing and updating referral and reporting systems to ensure children can safely report violence, further consideration, including programming and research, to be given to this co-occurrence of positive and negative changes in parenting methods and overlapping risk and protective factors. 6% of caregivers reported separation of children because of COVID-19. When a caregiver reported moving from where they normally live due to COVID-19, this was significantly higher at nearly one quarter. A number of other variables also had an association with reporting of separation at higher levels, including the caregiver having a disability, there being household illness, and the age of the caregiver when they were over 60 years old. Recommendations include tailored programming to identify and support caregivers in which disability, age or illness are a factor, as well as families on the move cash and social protection programming to address income and livelihood issues, as well as strong links with health sector responses to support identification, referral and appropriate care and follow up. Contingency plans developed with clear trigger points to respond to family separation, as well as government led alternative care plans. Further research on where, what and why children are being separated from their family is also needed. Hello. My name is Daniela Ritz and I'm presenting the findings on the impact on mental health and psychosocial well-being of the Save the Children COVID-19 study. Both children and their caregivers overwhelmingly reported an increase in negative feelings since the outbreak of the pandemic, whilst 83% of children reported this, it was 89% of caregivers. Around three in four children reported being more worried and more than half were more sad and felt less safe compared to before. 
There were a number of variables that led to an increase in negative feelings for children, but particularly being in touch with friends and being able to play have had an immense effect on children's feelings. Interestingly, the numbers of weeks of school closure rather than weeks in lockdown had a strong influence on reported negative feelings. Additionally, just under half of caregivers also observed changes in the behavior of their children indicating signs of distress. For instance, levels of change in emotional regulation, more aggressive behavior and bedwetting in children were between three to almost five times higher when six or more children lived in the household compared to only one child. Children with disabilities were more than three times more likely to show bedwetting and unusual crying and screaming. And children whose caregivers reported that there was violence in the home were more than four times more likely to show more aggressive behavior of violence against others. Based on these findings, some of the recommendations in support of mental health and psychosocial well-being of children and their caregivers include the investment in scale-up and integration of high-quality MHPSS programs across sectors in the COVID-19 response. MHPSS interventions for children and their caregivers should be provided across the continuum of care. The connection between children and the strengthening of a supportive peer environment should be increased and also the support is needed for parents and caregivers own mental health and psychosocial well-being and in support of the care for their children. This study has been important to bringing us closer to children's experiences of the impacts of COVID-19 and signals important considerations for their protection and well-being. The recommendations arising from this study findings sits within the broader calls to prioritize child protection within COVID-19 responses made by the UN Secretary General and agreed by states, multilateral and civil society organizations. Thank you.